Hello Sunshines, my name is Mariah Rosie, and today I'm going to be reviewing slash talking about the show Bee and Puppy Cat and taking a deeper look into the artwork. Bee and Puppy Cat is probably my favorite show of all time, and for reasons I don't even really know. The show is just that charming. So before we get into the art stuff, let's review the other parts of the show first. And a huge note, this is my first time ever doing a sort of in-depth review of something, so go easy on me. Bee and Puppy Cat follows a girl named Bee and a cute cat dog creature named Puppy Cat. Really, the name should have given that away. Bee is currently unemployed, but gets help from Puppy Cat via temp jobs. They get transported to crazy worlds in order to pay their rent every month. We also get to meet various friends of Bee and learn a little bit more about the people and the world they live in. Bee and Puppy Cat was created by Natasha Allegri, or however you pronounce her last name, and aired as a two-episode pilot on Channel Frederator's YouTube channel. It then gained popularity and got successfully kickstarted into a full series airing on Verve and then eventually onto YouTube. And good news, Bee and Puppy Cat Lazy in Space is coming this year in 2019. The main characters are obviously Bee and Puppy Cat. Bee is pretty spunky and is always a joy to watch on screen. She has great character development moments over this series run and really makes you connect to her as a person and not just some silly cartoon character 24-7. Puppy Cat is overall just a bit of a rebel and makes you laugh at his goofy anger, but truly Puppy Cat does care about Bee a lot and you can see their bond with each other form over time. And also, Puppy Cat can talk, but has the voice of a Vocaloid, which I thought was a really different and cool take on voicing an animal character. We also follow various other characters like Deckard, Cass, Cardamon, and more. Deckard is a close friend to B and wants to be a chef, and throughout the series we see him struggle with applying to a culinary school. Cass is Deckard's sister and is a programmer. Cardamon is one who collects the rent and has to be very responsible since his mother is asleep for some reason and I literally can't remember or I just have no idea why and it's never explained. All of the characters in the world have very charming and likable personalities and most of them act like real people would, though having lots of funny moments. Main characters drive the plot forward and have deeper conversations that are very relatable. Overall, the characters are really well written and I enjoy seeing them on screen. The world the story takes place in is never really specified, I think, or I literally can't remember. So it's apparent that Bee and Puppy Cat live in a small town or city near the ocean. It's a quaint little town, though we don't see a ton of it, but it's really cozy. So the other worlds in the show are pretty much all through Tempbot. We visit various worlds like this video game world, this cube world, and much more. Each is unique and has a different temp job Bee and Puppy Cat need to get done. Everything seems actually very cohesive, even though we are constantly visiting new places. The worlds and places aren't the main focus, I think. Just getting the temp job done in a world or doing an activity in the real world seems to be the focus, or at least that's what I felt. I felt that I wasn't paying much attention to the worlds and more on the characters and the temp jobs, but I'd say the world building is very subtle and well thought out. Let's talk about the music. Oh my gosh, it really takes the cake. I absolutely adore the music of this show so much. All of the music really fits the soft nature of the show's color palettes and scenes, and when it needs to get upbeat for an action scene, it knows how to do it. I can't find any music that sounds like this at all. It has a lot of soft piano synths, I think, and nice beats. It's kind of like lo-fi or something along those lines, but whatever kind of music it is, it is wonderful. 
Also, can we just talk about that ending scene music? It really makes you want to cry. The music has lots of emotion in it when it needs to, and it makes you feel things on a deeper level. The dialogue and how it is written is pretty excellent in my book. All of the characters have various ways of talking and it's never the same bland thing. They all have, again, touching moments that hit home and very funny jokes and moments that will make you smile. The voice actors did a fantastic job delivering their lines and the voices fit the characters so perfectly. Overall, the story in my book is just a fun adventure and a meaningful one too. The pacing to me is fairly well done. This show just really wants you to have a good time while also connecting with the audience and stuff like that. So there is a small plot twist in there at the end that really adds a lot and makes you ask lots of questions about the characters and who they really are. Now, I guess I do have to do a few criticisms for this show, but I have a really hard time finding a lot of anything that bugs me about it. So, I guess one of the only things I can find I dislike about this show is this crab. I really dislike this crab. Like, I know it's supposed to be something funny, but it was so annoying to me and didn't really add anything to the show at all. I think all of those scenes with the crab would have been like without the crab would have been completely fine. So yeah, and I've got to be honest, I can't find much that I dislike about the show other than like, when is Lazy in Space coming? Like, when? All right, now that I have all of my review stuff out of the way, let's look at the artwork of Bee and Puppycat. And I'm not an art know-it-all, so if I miss something or whatever, it's okay. Leave a comment down below if you see something else I should go over, like in future reviews and stuff like that. So, yeah, let's get into it. So the artwork of Bee and Puppy Cat is some of my favorite artwork I have ever seen in a show. I think right up next to Steven Universe, honestly. It's so soft, nice to look at, and fits the narrative. The animation in various scenes, I think think is kind of just common and nothing super spectacular. It's just common cartoon animation, but it is really nice. Only a few scenes stuck out to me is in being excellent in animation, like the dream sequences for some reason, like the video game scene where like puppy cat is flying, and probably a few others in there. but. Overall, I think it flows nicely, it looks great. I'm not an animation expert here, but I do enjoy how everything moves. The color palettes use lots of pastels and softer colors, but it can be bright when it wants to be. The pastels make everything seem so much cuter and it's very pleasing to look at. When it's raining or it's darker, it uses a lot of pastel blues, grays, and greens. When in brighter settings, it can be natural colors or even using a certain temperature. This is where I think the show really excels. It's not just one color palette throughout, and it knows when to use temperatures to portray a feeling of a place. The line work in the show is fairly thin and can be actually different colors depending on where you are and the clothing. So it has a nice flow and it sometimes adds like little curly cues to like paws and hair, which I think is a really nice touch. The composition of Bee and Puppy Cat, in my opinion, is actually really well executed. Most of the shots are really well thought out and even shots that are like just sitting there talking to each other is actually really compositionally well done. 
The composition, especially of rooms and places, is really excellent, kinda like Deckard's room, dream sequences, beaches, and others, um, stuff like that. So some of them are kind of generic, but that's okay, that's expected in a cartoon like this. So the composition does add more in touching scenes and are actually really integral, especially in the ending, to adding more emotion. So good job on the composition, guys, I'd say, even though I'm not the composition expert. The environments are so beautiful. Can we talk about the detail in the rooms? Deckard's room is probably one of my favorite places since they took a ton of care to add that detail in the room. Other rooms, like B's room, is also super detailed. They took their time to make things detailed instead of leaving them pretty bland, which I commend the people who did this, definitely great job. The town, in my terms, is pretty normal for a cartoon show, but is still designed with care. The worlds that Bee and Puppy Cat visit are also very beautiful, sometimes having an outer space vibe, and worlds like the video game one are very excellent with the accuracy to actual video games. Some worlds are designed with shapes in mind, like the cube one and the donut shaped one, giving them a lot of different feels. So the dream sequences and also the song animated parts, whatever you want to call them, are designed in surreal ways. So the dreams are very floaty with water floating around, which makes it, well, I guess, feel really dreamy. That's the whole point. And the songs are actually in a different style with kind of slower animation, I'd say, that makes them kind of look like they were cut out of paper. The environments are well thought out and detailed, which show to me that they took pride in designing the environments to look somewhat real. Each and every character is pretty round and soft around the edges, adding to the soft nature of the show. Each character's design matches their personality really well in my opinion, so, mm, so good. Something I love that the creators did is that they designed various outfit for the characters, especially B. I love that aspect since it makes the characters seem more real and, you know, real people wear different outfits every day, so definitely love that they did that. And that's all I kind of have to say on character design, I just think all of them look really cute and soft and huggable and nice. <laughs> So yeah, I probably overlooked some different things about the artwork, but that's alright. And again, leave a comment if you think I missed something or I should go over something else in a future video. So honestly, Being Puppy Cat is beautiful, fun, and such an enjoyable show and I would recommend it to anyone to watch. So please go give it a watch, you won't regret it, it's amazing. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review and overlook of Bean Puppy Cat and its artwork. Make sure to subscribe, check out my social media, and visit my art shops for more crazy art stuff from me. Bye bye!